Welcome to the Keystone Stars webinar series, Science, by Angel Avery Wright. Today we're going to talk about science and how we can teach it to young children. But keep in mind the following. Not all projects are safe for all children. Keep in mind the ages and developmental stages of your children. Follow all DHS regulations, especially regarding pets in the classroom. Refer to caring for our children as a resource regarding pets in the classroom as well. Compare and contrast. Younger children can compare and contrast things like size, shape, color, hot and cold, fast and slow. Even infants will benefit from these concepts and words. Experiment. Younger children can experiment by mixing paint colors. Older children growing mold on bread. Hypothesize is when you guess what's going to happen. Older children can draw or write what they think will happen. Record. Record items and graph. Observe. Teach children how to observe crying versus being sad, pretty versus blue. Objectives for today. Participants will be able to identify several branches of science. Participants will be able to use new ideas in their classroom. Participants will be able to recognize what materials and activities can be added to their science centers. Why science? Scientific inquiry begins not long after babies start noticing the world around them. When they stare at objects for long periods, it's because something about the object surprises them and they're trying to understand it. When they play with blocks or other simple toys, they're testing theories and expanding their understanding of the world. There are many different branches of science that are included in science as an overall topic. Things like anatomy, anthropology, archaeology, astronomy, biology, botany, chemistry, earth science, ecology, genetics, geology, oceanography, paleontology, physics, psychology, and zoology, just to name a few. What most science centers typically have, we'll see a living plant or two. Pets, I've seen fish, turtles, guinea pigs, hamsters, hermit crabs, lizards. Collection of natural items, usually we see rocks, shells, leaves, sometimes twigs, magnets, color paddles, magnifying glasses, microscope, and a scale. Some of the more unique ideas I've seen are ghost shrimp or sheep as pets. Natural items might include fossils, and miscellaneous will have things like bird nests, wood pieces, honeycombs, driftwoods, nuts, and pods. Anatomy is the study of the bodily structure of humans, animals, and other living organisms. The way to start teaching anatomy is by answering children's questions. Why do I blink? Where does food go when I eat? What happens when I sleep? There are 11 systems in the human body, circulatory, skeletal, immune, which is part of your lymph nodes, respiratory, muscular, digestive, the nervous system, which includes your brain and nerves, urinary, endocrine, which is glands, Integum integumentary, which is your skin, hair, nails, and reproductive. Using puzzles, felt figures, and 3D models is one way to help teach about the systems. Songs about body parts or systems, and of course, lots of books. Astronomy is the study of everything beyond the Earth's atmosphere, including the sun, moon, planets, stars, galaxies, etc. Make a sundial with plates, but don't stop there. Refer to it regularly. Build a planet or a galaxy, include the sun and the moon. You can also include shadows, like tracing outside with chalk or inside on paper. Trace different things, people, toys, etc. Discuss what an astronaut is and does, and include materials and dramatic play that refer to this occupation. Archaeology is the study of the human past by studying the remains and artifacts, historical objects, left by the people who lived long ago. These remains can include old coins, tools, buildings, and even garbage. Through studying remains and artifacts, we learn about past people, how they lived, what they looked like, and what tools they used. For very young children, create a dig site and let them find objects that have been buried. Many centers do this with their sand tables some using dirt instead of stand. 
Create time capsules with children so that future generations can see what it was like now. Teach children about archaeological tools such as spade, trowel, sieve, magnifying glass, and tape measure. Do you know what they're used for? Biology is the study of living organisms. So one of the most common things we see here are life cycles. Frog, chicken, butterfly, grasshopper. Sometimes there are live animals like hatching chicks or hatching a butterfly. But did you know you can also hatch praying mantises? Anyone know of any other critters to watch? Have children draw or describe what they see. Guess the date the eggs will hatch. Or hypothesize what the butterfly will look like. And sometimes you'll end up with those teachable moments. For example, one time I had a grasshopper hop into my center to molt his skin. I didn't realize that grasshoppers molted, but we were able to watch it until he was finished. The human body. Human body puzzles of the organs or skeleton, apron with organs that Velcro onto it. If you have skeleton x-rays of various animals, make it into a matching game. Add x-rays to the wall and Velcro answers on top of them. You can make book connections here, books on life cycles, open to the page where your eggs are in terms of progressing. You can also put a book on how to grow seeds into a plant, open to the page on how to take care of plants or what stages of plants your plants might be in. Botany. Botany is the study of plants, including their physiology, structure, genetics, ecology, distribution, classification, and economic importance. Often we see plants in the classroom. Experiments include growing plants from seeds in cups or growing beans in plastic baggies on the windowsill. Sometimes classrooms will be discussing parts of a plant. Here's an opportunity to use a book in the science area. Have a book with plant descriptions or how to take care of a plant in easy reach of where the plants are in your classroom. Adding leaves of various sizes and shapes to the art center is one way to bring plants into the classroom but you can also classify them by shape and size, whether or not they flower, and what kind of texture they have. Even young children with supervision can touch different plant leaves, but obviously no toxic plants. If children have access to a park or garden, have them identify the plants and trees and flowers that they see. Experiments with botany may include using flowers or celery to color with food coloring, dissecting a real flower to understand the parts of a flower in a concrete format, dissecting fruits or vegetables to see what's inside. And don't forget the tie-in to where many food items come from. Vegetable and fruits are the obvious choices, but did you know that chocolate comes from a bean, that peanuts come from a plant, or that mint tea is from leaves? Did you know broccoli was a flower? Chemistry. Chemistry is the branch of science that studies matter, anything that has mass and takes up space and its properties, and how different substances, especially molecules and their atoms, interact, combine, and change to form new substances. Typical example is the volcano experiment, where you mix baking soda and vinegar, sometimes soda and Mentos. But you can also do food coloring in water and add white carnations to see them absorb the color. You can also take two cups of water, add food coloring to one, and put a dry white paper towel on one end in each cup and see the color travel from one cup to the other. When you add a little bit of dish soap to milk and food coloring, the colors swirl around to form artistic and abstract paintings. That's because the molecules in the dish soap are attracted to the fat molecules in the milk. As soon as you introduce the soap to the milk coloring mixture, the molecules race around trying to bond. The food coloring gets pushed around in the process and appears to burst. Eventually, the molecules all bond and the reaction stops. Ecology is the study of the relationships between living organisms, including humans and their physical environment. It seeks to understand the vital connections between plant and animals and the world around them. Can you bring in vegetables and fruits and nuts and discuss how they are from plants and trees that provide us with food? Can you discuss food chains, herbivore, omnivore, carnivore, make puzzles or sequencing cards? And this is also where you can talk about recycling. Start a recycling drive, teach how to reuse, recycle, and repurpose. Upcycle by using recyclables in art, blocks, or music. Different projects, boxes, and instruments from shoeboxes and yarn.
Earth science, also known as geoscience, includes all science related to the planet Earth. Things like geography, geochemistry, meteorology. Geography talks about continents, rivers, mountains. Geochemistry talks about rocks, minerals, and soil. Meteorology talks about weather and climate. Make clouds, chart daily weather, or make chocolate rocks to show melting. Geology is an earth science concerned with the solid earth, the rocks of which it is composed, and the processes by which they change over time. Geology can also include the study of the solid features of any terrestrial planet or natural satellite, such as Mars or the Moon. So, you can play with a gem match. Find a book with gems or rocks and have photos of various kinds of, or real ones, of either rocks or gems, and have them find them in the book and identify them. You can compare different types of rocks. Some are smooth, some are rough, some have pretty colors, some are small or large, some are soft or hard. You can build towers from rocks. You can make a rock band by adding different types of rocks to different types of containers and shaking them. Oceanography is the study of the sea, the physical and biological properties. Hydrology is the study of water. So things like listening to the sounds of rain, ocean waves crashing on the shore, water lapping at the sides of a boat, a shower running, a faucet dripping, house spraying, filling up a bathtub. These are all water, and we use water for many different things. Can you think of some more? We use it for cooking, swimming pools, fish tanks, salt water versus fresh water. When you have a water table, you can do sink and float activities. You can have rainmakers by cutting holes into tubes and letting it rain. Bathing baby dolls, ice cubes in the water, waterfalls. Does water taste different than other water? Do a taste test between tap water, spring water, and flavored water. Graph who likes which one better. Warm water versus cold water experiments. For young children, you can label it as warm or cold. Do plants grow better in warm water or cold water? Paleontology is concerned with fossil animals and plants. Dinosaurs fall under this branch of science. Paleontology is a changing field, so make sure whatever you teach is up-to-date information. Bury the dinosaurs in the sand and find them. Trace the shadows of a dinosaur and compare them. Separate dinosaurs by what they eat, by size, by look, or even by type of defense. Physics is simply the study of matter and how it interacts with energy and forces and includes the following topics, among others. Magnets, buoyancy, gravity, simple machines, inertia, motion, light, and heat and energy. Magnets simply use magnets to find out what is magnetic and what is not in the classroom. Even young children can do this. Buoyancy, what floats and what doesn't, and explain density. The definition of gravity is a force that attracts things, objects, masses, particles, or light. Most of the time we think about gravity as the reason we are walking on the ground rather than floating in the air. We are attracted to the earth. Gravity is why objects fall to the ground. The strength of the attraction depends on the mass of the two objects and the distance between them. The greater the mass, the greater the attraction. For toddlers, you may not even want to explain it to them. It's okay just to let them experience the concept without actually giving a name to it yet. For preschoolers, you can simply explain it as this. Gravity is what keeps your feet on the ground. It's why objects fall to the ground. So have your child jump up and down. Why do you fall back to the ground? Why didn't you stay in the air? because gravity pulled you back down. Drop a variety of objects to see which falls faster. Simple machines, incline planes or ramps, pulleys, etc. For ramps, cars or marbles, steep or flat ramps, using cardboard or pool noodles for ramps. For inertia and motion, compare rolling different objects, a ball, a round block, marble, etc. Does size affect how fast one rolls? Make airplanes and discover which ones fly faster which ones fly better. For light, you can make connections to shadow. And for heat or energy, you can track daily temperatures and see what affects the temperature, the sun, clouds, etc. 
or what happens to water when it is heated or frozen. Psychology is the study of the mind or the brain. Show photos of spiders, snakes, etc. to see if there's an innate fear of that animal or is it taught. If you show the spider drawings above in three different configurations, children will find the right one. Why do people, animals, and plants do the things they do? Show a photo of a plant growing around something. Why do cats scratch? Why do dogs lick your nose? Why do you like chocolate? Things to study. How strongly are children's interests related to their parents? For example, I didn't like the Beatles growing up because my parents didn't like the Beatles. Can watching facial expressions tell you if a person is lying? Do colors have an effect on people's emotions? Studies have shown that light pink is a very calming color. Does music have an effect on your level of happiness? Who are more superstitious, men or women? Zoology. Class pets, again, things like guinea pigs, hamsters, gerbils, mice, hermit crabs, frogs, turtles, shrimp, fish, crabs, snails, just to name a few. Letting children take care of them to learn about basic needs, but also to study them. What kind of behaviors do they exhibit? What do those behaviors mean? For example, a guinea pig knows that he gets a snack when the kids get their snacks, so he relates that time to when the children are washing their hands and sitting down that he's going to get a snack too. Go for unusual pets. Glass shrimp usually cost under a dollar and they're a clear bodied animal. Keep a book about whatever pet you have near the pet. The book can show children how to take care of an animal and also give you some general information about that pet. Having a book on gerbils doesn't count if you have hamsters, however. Zoos. If you have biases about zoos, keep them to yourself. Discuss what zoos do to keep endangered animals from becoming extinct. What kind of conservation efforts they have. Sometimes they're protecting animals that can no longer care for themselves. There's an eagle at the Lehigh Valley Zoo that was shot with an arrow and can no longer fly. He lives at the zoo and is taken care of there. Sharing information with the public about why they should care. Extinction is an issue for some animals. And what is humane? No more fur coats, rhino horns, or elephant tusks. Wild animals. People should never interact with wild animals. It teaches them to be dependent on humans. Bird watch. Add a few feeders and sit back and watch. It's easy to identify birds such as cardinals, morning doves, or blue jays, but grab a book with photo descriptions and identify the ones that come to your feeders. Graph which birds you see each day and discuss the graph. Do you see more of a particular bird during a particular season or weather pattern? Track two types of birds for a year, ones that migrate and ones that don't. If you're going to teach children that birds migrate, keep in mind that only some birds migrate, not all of them. Robins are a sign of spring. They literally return here every spring. Um, but not all birds disappear for the winter. Some will stay here. Keep in mind that there are DHS regulations in regards to having pets in your classroom, and caring for your children can also be recommended to learn more about pets and child care. Thank you for listening to this PowerPoint on science.